Hello friends, Tanya here with another video, this time featuring the Spellbinders Add to Cart Collection. This is such a fun and innovative stamp, or excuse me, die set. I am amazed. It's so darn cute. I had to make four cards with it. Now I'm still in love with these Distress Mica Spray Stains. And this is the Jack-O-Lantern, which I did over an orange um, cardstock. Or no, this was a pink cardstock. Now I'm also going to take this um, stencil from Spellbinders. This one is called the Sunburst. It's a six by nine stencil. And I have a piece of uh, five by seven cardstock, heavyweight white cardstock, and I'm inking it with, hmm, I think that was abandoned coral. And I took out some worn lipstick. And this is in an effort to match that pink paper that I already spritzed with the jack-o'-lantern mica spray stain, distress stain, um, on some pink paper. I have my cardstock just organized in a binder or a file cabinet thing that is in rainbow order. So all of the oranges together, all the yellows, all the reds, all the pinks. So I can't tell you exactly what color it is or what company. I just pulled it out and decided I liked that color. <clears throat> Talk about simplifying your stash, huh? I am spritzed. I spritzed that with some pearlized water to add some spray uh, to add some sparkle to that. Also, now we're going to use the shopping cart party. Uh, party. Oh, what does that say? Party something. Anyway, it'll be linked in the description box below, as always. And I die cut all of these different um, girls' night out type. Items. I've got a wine bottle and these glasses, drink glasses, and the die set includes the drink for the inside of these glasses. I love that there's a border edge so it still looks like you have some glass showing on your drink. And I used the same, I used that pink that I spritzed with the Jack Lantern Mica Spray. And I am adhering those to the glasses. I had spritzed some green cardstock with some green mica, distress mica stain. You could use all kinds of different ways to add shimmer to that. I just am in love with that mica stain. Um, I die cut the elements of the bottle from both black and gold. The label, the bottle top, and the square label for, or excuse me, the seal. You've got the bottle top, the seal, and the large label that come on those detailed dies. And it's one die that cuts out three different things. I love when your little tiny dies are grouped together so you aren't having to fuss so much. I use my little pickup stick here to adhere those to the different elements and I'm getting ready to line all of that up. I'm building my scene before I put it on the card. There are also pennants and the banner. You can um, add the little banners directly to the pennant. I am trimming off the gold ties because I die cut it with a shimmery white and a shimmery gold. No, plain white and a shimmery gold. And I wanted the ties to be gold. I needed a little more gold accent in this card. So I'm adding the ties. And then I had die cut the little pennants or little banner flags out of three different colors here. And I'll just quickly adhere those with a dab of glue and using my little picket pickup stick to get them exactly where I want. Like most things with spell binders, there is an embossed uh, detail on this so you can see exactly where to line up your little banners. And it comes together so quickly. I love how this looks. This is going to create a perfect little shelf type grounding element for these items to go on your card. And now it's time to start putting this together. There are several sentiments in this stamp set that I really wanted to use on this card. Um, there's a happy birthday, a celebrate, and oh gosh, we're going to have to wait and see what it said. I don't remember. I just know that I wanted a third sentiment on the bottom of the card. So I'm going to take those stamps. I've put my card panel in my mini misty here 
and I'm going to lay them out where I want them with the elements of the card laid but not adhered on the card front and I'm going to line them up. I think it says a girl's night or something like that on the bottom. It's perfect. It, it just works perfectly with all of these elements. I'm going to use some VersaFine Onyx Black. This is my go-to sentiment ink. It's nice and crisp and bold. It stamps beautifully. Most of the time I only need to do one inking. Um, yeah, it just says girl's night out. <laughs> this is what happens when you do the voiceover a while after you created the card. <laughs> <clears throat> so all three of those are stamped on there and none of these elements are adhered yet. The banner I wanted to have a little more height, a little more dimension, so I cut the uh, banner element out twice with some heavyweight cardstock and I'm going to just stack those together. I want them to be a little taller than the bottle and the glasses, but not a lot taller. So I'm not using coaster blank to do this. You could die cut the coaster blank with it, but I find with those little fine details, it gets a little challenging to get them out of the die without destroying it. So some pieces of cardstock will work just fine. Now I'm ready to pull out my um, card base, and this is a five by seven card, as per usual for me. <laughs> just going to crease that well. I've already scored this seven by ten piece of cardstock at five and um, five inches and used my bone folder here to get a nice creased edge. You know what? That other panel that I inked on, that must have been four by six or four and a quarter by six and a quarter. That might have been it. No, it was four by six because this shimmery white card stock that I used in the background is four and a half by six and a half and it's got a wider border. You could certainly use a different color. You could use gold or pink or green as um, your matte panel behind it, but I like the subtlety of white. I think it adds a bit of elegance and lets the other elements of the card really shine through. Just going to adhere all of these. Now I didn't put any dimension behind the base of these glasses, but I did put some dimension behind the part that holds the actual alcoholic beverage, or not alcoholic, but we're going with alcohol theme on this one. And I did add a little dimension behind the wine bottle, just a little bit with some coaster blank to add some specialness to that. And that is card number one. Oh wait, I think I add some gems. Yep, I grabbed the silver mix, or the crystal mix, sorry. Um, color Essentials Gems, and I'm going to add a few of these. I've used up almost all of my gold ones, but it looks like I've got lots of the crystal mix. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to use my extra pokey tool. It's a little, little easier to get things with this finer pokey tip, which I have poked myself hard enough to draw blood with, by the way. I'm a little reckless there. What can I say? And I'm adding those to each side of this, and it really brings the level up. Now we're going to use the shopping cart holiday and president presents, not presidents, presents. <laughs> there is a tree and garland and different um, ornaments. There are several presents, a bow and a, uh, a sash that wraps around your shopping cart, which I think that is so clever. There are so many clever elements to this uh, series of dies. I just love it. Now the garland, there is one garland that you just use to do all of your garlands on your tree. You just trim off the extra. And I had die cut this with some green cardstock, the tree, with some green cardstock that I uh, spritzed with the shimmer, no, the distress mica stain, which again, in love with it. I think I spritzed spritzed everything except the already shimmery paper. I used some gold shimmer cardstock uh, to die cut the um, garland that went around the tree. And I just used, I think I only needed two, two pieces. And then there is a gold star that comes in this die set that you can put on the top of your tree. And all of these little 
ornaments. Now, as you may see on that die set, you get six ornaments that cut all at once. Another amazing part of the Spellbinders kits, the little tiny dies are often combined, so you don't have to fuss with those little tiny pieces. Love that. That is such a great innovation. I'm laying out all of these ornaments on the tree, which I'm going to stick in a shopping cart. I know that sounds funny. A totally decorated tree, but it's a card. It's not reality. <laughs> it doesn't have to be very real. A decorated tree just looks a whole lot more fun. <clears throat> just going to add a little dab of glue behind each of these and use my pickup stick to pick up the ornaments and add them to the dab of glue. There's nothing precise about this. Where they land isn't all that important. I just try to make sure they're all straight up and down or relatively close to straight up and down. <laughs> there is even a tree trunk with some striation for the bark embedded or excuse me embossed right into the panel and there is your Christmas tree. That actually went pretty darn quick. It's so fun to build those kinds of things. I love it. Now this is the shopping cart. I have this one all assembled. <clears throat> in one of the next cards I make, I will show you how to assemble this particular uh, shopping cart. There is a way to make it 3D. I am choosing to keep it fairly um, flat on this card, actually on all of my cards, but I will show you the 3D elements to it. I'm assembling the bow. Now you don't have to use the tails on this bow and I've actually seen it made into a wreath where you use, um, where you assemble the bow part twice and adhere it together so that it's a big circle. And look how this wrap, this sash wraps around your cart. It is so cute. I love that. Ah, I'm adding a little dimension behind this bow before I pop it onto the shopping cart. And that shopping cart is super easy to assemble too. You'll see that a little bit later. I love all the dimension and layers in that bow. Now I'm trying to decide which way I want the Christmas tree to sit in the cart and I think I'm going to go with this direction. It just seems to flow the best. And I have stamped this sentiment or this, this uh, saying from the stamp set and I'm going to use the circle die from the mini circles and strips large die of the month from June or July. I don't remember. Again, linked in the description box below die cutting that. I love to use all of my things from my stash. It's so handy. Um, this is going to sit in the cart also. I'm not sure who's going to get this card, but it's so fun. I am also using the uh, mini slimline confetti, I think it's called, uh, glimmer plate. This came out, I think, in July. I'm using the opal uh, foil and I'm going to do this twice on this five by seven. Nope. It is a five and a half, no four and a half by six and a half inch panel. Cause again, I'm making another five by seven card and I am going to foil this on. I want this to look like snow. I think that looks amazing. We're going to take another panel here and run that through the foiling system a second time. So I've got my heating up glimmer hot foil system on a different table. It doesn't fit in my workspace most of the time. Yeah, you would be shocked. I really don't have much more space than what you see on my work area. Yeah, my glimmer hot foil system would not fit. So yes, you let that heat up. You put your um, plate with your sandwich together, set the timer, run it through your die cutting machine, and remove the plate to see your beautiful foiling. Next, I pull out the speckled egg and the salvaged patina distress inks. These are not the distress oxides. These are the distress inks. And I'm using an ink blending brush here to apply a very light uh, amount of the speckled egg, which looks so pretty on this panel. I really like the soft blue of this color. It's great for a sky a nice washed out light blue sky, which is what you often have in the winter time. You don't have that vivid autumn sky anymore, at least not where I live. 
but I wanted to add a little more intensity to this. So I pulled out the Salvage Patina, also the Distress Ink, not the Distress Oxide. I wanted that quality of ink, which is a little more vibrant than the Distress Oxides. Plus, I didn't want the Oxides, which are opaque, less translucent, to interfere with the foiling detail. You can easily ink blend over your foils. It will resist the ink. I just didn't want to take any chances. I did spritz this with a little bit of my homemade pearlized water, which has perfect pearls in water in a spray bottle. Part of the stamp set is this grounding element for the shopping cart. It has, <clears throat> it has a spot for the wheels to just nestle like, and then it looks like they're uh, in motion because they have that motion behind each of the wheel. Just going to line this up as carefully as I can. It's a little tough with these very fine line detail stamps to get them exactly where you want, but this is where a misty is so handy. I'm going to use some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide because the Distress Oxides stamp much more nicely. They are uh, a little more versatile in that respect and there you can see how that lines up perfectly with the wheels of your cart. I'm also going to take a couple of sentiments and I'm going to stamp those in the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'm going to start out with this first sentiment which is going to go on the outside of the card and it says it's an add to cart kind of day <laughs> which is so fun. I also I'm going to stamp the sentiment I'm going to put on the inside of the card. It says something to the effect of, because I bought it on sale, I actually made money, <laughs> which is kind of a tongue-in-cheek reference to um, the joys of bargain hunting. And since <clears throat> Black Friday is all, not all that far away, and I know many people really do enjoy the, pro, the tradition of going out actually shopping on Black Friday. I'm not one of those people, but I know several people who are into that. I prefer to not have a shopping be a contact sport. <laughs> Some people really get a kick out of that whole bargain hunting specialness. And all, more power to them is what I say. <laughs> I just won't be joining them. We're going to add this flagged sentiment just under the edge of the shopping cart, which I think is adorable. I really think this is adorable. I'm not a huge shopper. However, this is so cute. I can't believe it. <laughs> we're going to tuck our tree right inside there and we're going to add our little sentiment, which I'm going to put a little bit of dimension behind again with some coaster blanks. You can't see it, but I have a drawer in my crafting area. My crafting area is a china hutch that I converted to a standing height desk with all kinds of storage areas. And in that drawer is a bunch of scraps of coaster blanks so I can just reach right over and grab what I need. I did ink blend some salvage patina on that piece of cardstock and did a little diagonal cut. So now you're going to see how we assemble the shopping cart. I have cut it out in several different colors. I'm going to use a black main body cart, black for the wheels, some sh shimmery silver <clears throat> cardstock for the legs and for the handle. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue behind the back edge of the cart and adhere the handle. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the top of each of these wheels. And you just take that leg bracket, foot bracket, however you want to do that, and center the tip in the middle of the circles. And it's super easy to get those all lined up. Super easy. Now the main body of the cart, you're going to line that up so that the back edge is pretty even with the back curve of the leg portion and then we're going to add the handle which is a die cut. There's also a little front corner protector on that same die that you cut the handle out with <clears throat> and I'm just going to tack that down with a little bit of glue 
And there you have your shopping cart. It comes together so quickly. It's so stinking cute. And then we have these other pieces that create um, the 3D effect. Now, if you were going to make this 3D, I would put the legs just on the back version and do all the extra decorating on the front version. <clears throat> and now we're going to assemble one of the presents. There's several different gift shaped dies in the a coordinating die set. Um, and I use the same sash die to add the ribbon to the middle of the package. However, I discovered later that there is a straight die that you could use, but I think this looks pretty cute too. I am still going to use the tails on this particular ribbon, but I'm going to adhere them a little higher under that bow, shorten them up a bit. And then we'll adhere that to the top of this gift. I decided to add a second gift to the inside of this particular shopping cart. Oop, I'm not finished adhering that bow. <laughs> we'll get that adhered before I move on to the next present. I wanted there to be a couple of presents in here and I was originally thinking about making this a thank you card. I think it ends up being a thank you card anyway. <laughs> yes, I had to go grab it. Yes, it did end up being a thank you card. I also did this one in Salvage Patina. The first one was the same red, no, same pink as I used on the Girls Night Out card. I have these two presents and then here are some other elements that you can use to make a 3D shopping cart. Um, there are two different widths and you use the same width for each, the front and the back depending on how thick you want your 3D element to be. These are the skinnier ones. So there's the skateboard looking one and a boogie board shaped one. That's how I, what I'm going with. And you trim off the top and bottom of the the you, make, you cut out two of the boogie board ones, same size, and for the front of it, you cut off the top and the bottom, and there are some marks in showing you where to cut those off. Then you crease the side pieces, and then you adhere them to the back of the shopping cart um, that's going to be the, the top portion or the, the visible portion. You do that front and back, and then this is the bottom so that you can put something inside the cart. And you just fold up all of those little legs and adhere that to the inside of the card. And then you're gonna add a little bit of glue to the front and the back, and you're going to adhere those to the boogie board pieces on the front and the back of the cart. I tried to use my reverse tweezers, but that was way too top hit heavy. So I grabbed a little bulldog clip and I'm going to just um, hold those pieces together. It doesn't take very long, but I am so not patient. I wanted to move on to gluing the next piece. This actually comes together, again, super fast. I love that. So I pulled out of my stash this um, piece of cardstock that I had foiled with the foiled brush strokes and stripes glimmer foil set with the opal embossed, excuse me, foil. And I'm going to use that to finish off this card. I took a piece of silver shimmer cardstock in um, I think that is four and a half by six and a half inches and I cut the foiled brush strokes and stripes down to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I wanted a narrow border. I could have gone just a little bigger. That border could have been just a little more narrow. I wanted it pretty delicate. And I have put some coaster blank behind the front bottom and back of that cart because I am going to show you a little trick. I adhered that to the card front. I adhered the presents inside the cart, but not to the cart. They're adhered to the card background. I stamped this thank you sentiment from the coordinating stamp set, and I'm going to heat emboss that in silver. Since we're doing a silver, um, cart. I thought that would be better than gold. And then we're going to die cut that again with that circle die from the, hmm, the color block circles and stripes large die of the month from June 2021. I'm in my craft room so I can actually see which set that was because it's still on my desk. <laughs> 
I used a lot. And we're going to just put a little bit of coaster blank behind one side of that circle. Again, just rounding some of the edges just in case they might want to peek out. I'm going to trim off a little extra of that because it is going to be adhered partially over the shopping cart. I want to make that all nice and level so it doesn't get warped or, or messed up. Now, since we didn't adhere those presents and we have a little height behind it, we can tuck a gift card right inside that shopping cart, which I think is perfect with the whole feel of this card. Now, this is a bonus card. I was going to use this background behind the thank you card, but it is way too bold. The shopping cart just did not stand out Behind, over the top of it. So I think this works well just all on its own. I have a five by seven piece of cardstock here. No, it is a four and a half by six and a half inch piece of cardstock. I decided to cut it down to the side I, size I was actually, no, I didn't. Anyway, it's going to ultimately go on a five by seven card. I have stamped these two thank you circles all over the front of this paper and I am heat embossing them with again white satin pearl you could do clear you could do white you could do any color you wanted I just am really partial to the white satin pearl so there we go and I'm sprinkling that all over the front of this piece of cardstock and I am heat setting that with my heat tool until it comes to life all shiny and raised there is that finished panel and now to step it up. It's not just going to be a textured background. It's going to be a rainbow of thank yous. I'm using one of my favorite methods to get a rainbow. I'm just using three distress inks. These are the distress inks, not the distress oxides. And I started out with my blender brushes, but I needed a heavy application. So I pulled out my blending sponges. I happen to have several that are dedicated to a single color. I'm working on my collection of uh, handles to enable to me enable me to have a single handle with a sponge dedicated to every single color of distress uh, inks and another set for distress oxides. I know that sounds extravagant. It is a little extravagant, but I do so much ink blending. This is really going to help me out. We choose the things we want to spend our money on. <laughs> I am doing large areas of each color with some overlap because this will give us with the red, the yellow, and the cyan, or in this case, the salvage patina, which is a tealy blue, it will give us a rainbow instantly. I think I should have done a little more of the yellow to get orange with a little less of the red, but I think it still works <clears throat> and it's in a circular motion around this card almost complete here lots of ink blending if I had used distress oxides it probably would have gone a little faster but you sacrifice the vividness of your rainbow when you use the distress oxides so you have to weigh your chosen effect which which one you're going to use this turned out pretty awesome though I spattered it with some plain water. I won't say clean because it's not very clean. <laughs> and with some, I used my uh, pearlized water spritzer to add a little shimmer to that also. Trimmed it down to four and a half by six and a half inches, put some coaster blank behind it, and adhered it to a five by seven card base. That's it for that card. Super simple. Once in a while, I do simple. Here's a recap of all of the cards I made with this collection. And I'm sure I will make more projects, just not right this moment. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like it, share it if you want, comment, let me know your thoughts on this video. If you're interested in any of the products I've used today, they'll be linked in the description box below as always. And here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.